Hi, this is Justice with Tablet Pro. I wanted to talk about the Surface Pro X and uh, kind of how I misjudged it and how I think the industry has misjudged it. So part of the problem that I think all of us have been doing, and I mean almost all of us have been doing, is that I think that we're looking at the Surface Pro X like a sprinter instead of a long distance runner. And there's benefits to both of those different things. I think that it's it's really important that we have the correct perspective on what this machine can do. There's a quote by Albert Einstein, at least it's attributed to Albert Einstein, that says that uh, everybody is a genius, but if you judge a fish by the way that it can climb, that it's going to believe that it's stupid. Or it's gonna believe its whole life that it's stupid. And uh, while this is not exactly the same situation as he's referring to, I do think it's applicable. I think that if you are judging a computer by how fast it is, uh, instead of some of the other qualities that it has, that we may end up misjudging and thinking this machine is uh, garbage or not great because it can't um, climb. And really what we're doing is, is we're taking one aspect of what a computer can do and we're measuring the entire thing by that one aspect. So I think that there is a um, paradigm shift happening when it comes to computers and software. Um, with the Surface Pro 6, the i5 model that I had, uh, I was able to run a large percentage, probably 80% of the programs that I used at a completely lag-free speed. So there was, uh, I'm using different drawing programs and there wasn't any time that I felt the computer was actually slowing me down. The software was optimized well enough and the computer was fast enough that even if I had a computer five times faster, it was going to do, it was going to respond exactly the same speed. So at this stage, what then is most important? If you have a computer that's already fast enough, what do you do? And you can make it faster, and we have, but there are other aspects that we can improve on in, in the uh, tablet and uh, mobile computing arena. And I think that's what the Surface Pro X did. So I think that, that what we're looking at now is not what is the fastest computer and not what can play every single game or run every single application. If we look at the iPad, uh, no one is looking at it right now and saying, well, why can't it run OS X programs? And I think that we understand that there are limitations to that chipset and that, that type of computing experience. And while the Surface Pro X looks like a standard <laughs> Windows 10 machine, it is in fact a different type of creature. And by creature, I mean computer. <laughs> so yes, it does have limited compatibility. It's not going to run everything. Neither does the iPad. When uh, you're looking at it, uh, I originally thought that it was going to be able to run a neutered version of maybe two or three of the drawing programs I used when in fact, uh, currently I have a list of, I think, 12 different programs, drawing programs, uh, 2D design programs that work very, very nicely on the Surface Pro X. So compatibility should grow, uh, not shrink. And with it already being probably eight times the uh, amount of software is compatible uh, over what I initially, and I think what a lot of reviewers initially were thinking, it is a far more capable machine than I originally was thinking. So that said, in what ways is this fish a genius. And so battery life is number one. And I think that's really where the trade-off comes in. Uh, we're, we're talking about a machine that in practical use is probably twice as efficient, it can go twice as long as the Surface Pro 7. In my real world tests with the Surface Pro 7 i7 model, uh, I'm getting like four, four and a half hours. Uh, and if I'm gaming, I'm getting just slightly over one hour. And so uh, this is your sprinter, right? And then you look at the Surface Pro X and this is our long distance runner. It's not gonna be going as fast the entire time. That's not the point, but it can do certain tasks for a lot longer with a beautiful screen, uh, always connected, instant on, and a um, oh, great pen experience. Granted, I'm not a big fan of the slim pen. I think for certain types of people, it's, it's a great option, an expensive great option. <laughs>
still think the Raphael 520, the brand new one from them, is a better option. So who is the Surface Pro X built for, and who do I think should be looking at this machine? Uh, if you want something that has a longer battery life, a beautiful screen, if you want something that can run the programs you are already using, and you're not out there trying tons of different programs because what you're using isn't working good enough. If you're using a program that already does what you want it to do, and you just want to continue using that same program, if it runs in the Surface Pro X and it's lag free, then who cares? You know, it's going to be a great option for you. Again, it has that beautiful screen, has a great pen experience, and is able to do uh, what you need it to do already. Uh, if that's you, this is a great machine. Uh, and it's it's a long distance runner. It's not a sprinter. And that is that is a huge benefit for a lot of people. I think that, that we should take another look at the Surface Pro X and strongly consider it if, if the programs that you're running are compatible. Now, I, I'm working on a video right now that has a list of and demo of the uh, top 10 to 12 uh, drawing and, and design programs that are available for the Surface Pro X that do run well. And that should be out sometime, I believe, this weekend. So I'll, I'll link to that in the description. So whenever that's out and whenever you watch this, you should be able to find that list. Uh, and ask me questions. I'll have the Surface Pro X for probably another couple weeks or a month and can test out a number of these different things uh, for you so that you're able to figure this stuff out without having to do it on your own. If you found this information useful, then please subscribe. And thank you for watching. Until next time, stay creative.